Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, I'm going to tell you some important tips before you enroll into the CBT mode of CSIR NET exam for the first time. So you are going to be the first batch of CSIR UGC NET CBT mode candidates. So a lot of things have been changed, right? Like uh, earlier times, if you have already uh, taken the CSIR NET exam earlier, you know that there was OMR sheet, there was like everything is paper bound, so you can see the question papers, you can see them physically written in the paper. But now everything is on screen. Many people may have difficulties reading from on screen and preparation from on screen. I personally feel myself also find difficulty seeing things in the screen and then selecting it. I find it more concentration breaking uh, than the conventional mode of selecting a question and reading a question. Anyway, we cannot do anything about it. But what you can do about it is you need to mold yourself into that CBT mode. You need to tune yourself into that CBT mode. So what are the important things that you should keep in your mind while you are attending the CBT mode CSR GCNET exam which is about to occur. So if you want to know about that then watch this video completely. Okay, so the very first thing, I am going to give you three tips for uh, mold yourself and tune yourself to the CSR net exam in the CBT mode or computerized mode. So tip number one is the difference between the conventional mode and the CBT mode. The difference in conventional mode you have the paper, the questions are printed in the paper. So all the questions are printed. So you literally flip the pages and you can see the questions. So you can mark that I am going to attain this question or this question or this question. Remember there will be 75 questions in part C, 50 questions in part B and 20 questions in part A and you need to attain 25 out of 75 in part C, 35 out of 50 in part B and 15 out of 20 in part A. So the same thing between that. But Earlier what happens, you have the question papers, you can select them manually, you can, you can put a tick mark in the question paper so that in future times you can just read those questions and answer that. But now you can also do that marking but you need to do that marking in the website, you know in the interface. So this is going to be a little different, you, you find it a little odd or weird sometimes at the very beginning so you need to mark that like that. So what you can do is that for all the questions you can mark or unmark and there are different type of marking schemes. You may feel it complicated and find it really complex. For that reason I already prepared a video of the user interface you are going to get for the CSR NET CBT mode exam. You can watch that video. Now the thing is here, if you find it difficult then I will tell you a simple trick. That simple trick is that once you are reading a question, let's say you start reading the question, question number 1, 2. So you need to shift through the question very fast. This is one thing that you need to keep yourself right you need to select a question or reject a question faster otherwise it will be a waste of time okay because it's not flipping of the page it's like clicking every single questions okay so that's why you need to reject or select a question fast now if you're seeing a question you're rejecting it so no doubt about it if you're selecting a question you may answer that question correct or may not sometimes you read the question completely and then come to know that you cannot answer that with 100% confidence or you have a tie between two options. For those questions, you can select an option and you can mark that question so that it not, it's not getting submitted until or unless you finalize it. Okay? You can do that. But it may, be comp like it may feel complicated. right? To reduce that complication, what, I, what you can do is that you can see that question. You have a rough page given or every single time love page will be given. So in the rough page you just write the number of the question and the option that you think correct next week. You do not do anything in the interface but do that in the paper. For those questions you are not confirmed but for the question you are confirmed you must fill it. So that gives the tip number two. That whatever, whenever you find a question and you see a question, you know the answer for 100% confidence, 90% above confidence, you fill it, fill it then and there. You should not just write it down in the paper, you should fill it then and there. Because you know at the end, if the time uh, passes by, the test will be automatically submitted. And during the automatic submission, you will not get any chance of filling the questions. If and if you write them in the rough page, the rough page will be taken from you uh, and it will not give you any credibility for that. Okay, So it's very very carefully whenever you know a correct answer you just fill it and that pass it on. But if you are not confirmed about any question you just uh, mark it and in the paper you write down the number of question and write next to it what option you think 
is most often. So you do that for every single question till the end. And at the end, when you see that your marks are not coming up to your standards or up to the standard that you desire to qualify GRF or LS, in that case you select those questions back, you can directly click on the number of the, those questions and then select the option that you find uh, most appropriate for them. Okay. So this is what you should do. This is the approach that you should follow. Now the tip number three and the last tip is during submission. This is one thing, you know, many people ask that, what about submission? If we do not submit manually, will it submit it? Will it get submitted? The answer is yes. If you do not submit it manually, if the time is already over and you're still busy finding up options, they will, the screen will uh, be frozen and will be automatically submitted. It's very important. If, and if you manually submit that, you click the submit button. Remember that until or unless you hit, hit the final submit button with because when you hit one button, it's not going to be submitted. It will prompt you that, are you sure you're going to submit? You select yes, then final submission, yes, then only it will be submitted. So once it's submitted, you cannot do anything about it. When you select the option for a question, you click next. That does not mean you submitted, okay? Clicking next means you move to the next question. That means the first question is not submitted. It's only the draft version of the question that is saved, right? So until or unless you hit the submit button, it will not get submitted. So once you click the submit button at the end, it's getting submitted. Make sure that before hitting the submit button, at least five minutes prior, you should have five minutes in your hand and make sure during that time that none of the question is left uh, wrongly marked. Okay, because it may happen that you, you thought the question option will be B, but you marked C or something like that. Because once you click the submit button, you cannot undone the submit or submission. Okay, so remember that. And along with that, also it, when you hit the submit button, you also make sure that all the formalities are done. And at the end, the confirmation of the submission is shown. And your examiner, what, whoever will be present in that room, uh, can guide you about that. If any if anything wrong with the technical issues or any glitches happen, you should report that immediately. And the time lag between fixing that uh, problem or error must be given back to you, and it's your right to get back. Okay. So remember that. Do not get uh, like uh, don't be like frightened about that if it's not getting like any kind of deal or anything happens like that. But if, even if it's happening, then there is obviously a chance to fix it because NT has been conducting test for a long time. It's not like for their first time, okay? So there are many a way to counteract that problem as well, okay? So these three tips you should remember, okay? If you remember these three tips, follow this, you know, revise this video a couple of times so that all the information get clear in your brain before going into the exam hall. Because once you're in the exam hall, you're on your own. Nobody's go going to help you in terms of these tips. They are going to help you if there is anything wrong with the technical part, right? So that's all about it. If you follow these tips, I believe you will not find CBT more difficult. I find it is going to be much easier. And actually, uh, we need to save trees. That's why uh, this this decision has been made. And I think it's it's a brave thing. It's a good thing, and a good thing that it happens. Okay. So you need to accept anything that comes down to us. We should accept it. It's a better mood, and you also have a better exam. Keeping this thought in your mind, I'm going to end this video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Share this video with your friends. Subscribe to our channel and also hit the bell icon so that you get notified whenever we publish a new video. Thank you, everyone. Bye.